from Team Super Awesome Art, and today we're going to do a top five frequently asked questions video. Now, I know some of you have been wondering where we've been and why we haven't been posting any videos these last couple months. And the reason for that is that we have moved. We've moved to Miami, um, and it's taken way longer than we had hoped to actually make the move and make the transition. So um, that's why we haven't been making videos, but hopefully we'll be able to get back on track uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video, but now let's get to the frequently asked questions that I know you guys um, clicked on this video to watch. The questions that we're going to answer today are in no particular order. They're just ones that really stood out to me and Hutch, and um, we thought that these would be a good way to start our frequently asked questions videos. Keep in mind that everything we're going to go over today is things that we use in making our customs. So please make sure you check out our videos and like our results. And then if you do, please, by all means, try it out for yourself and see if it works for you. First question is, can you use air dry clay when making a Funko Pop? To answer that, I wouldn't advise it. The reason being is two reasons mainly. Number one, air dry clay is a water-based clay, meaning that they use water in order to keep the clay soft and pliable and then once it's exposed to air it dries up and hardens. Now when that happens the moisture in the clay evaporates and then it causes the clay to shrink and when you're sculpting on a pop and you use a clay that's shrinking it's actually going to cause your sculpt to crack. The next reason is air dry clay is a very brittle clay so when sculpting thinner pieces you're going to have a hard time um, keeping it together and not having it snap off. So I wouldn't advise air dry clay for a full sculpt, but if you wanted to make, let's say, like a little accessory and then maybe glue it onto your pop, that's fine. I do understand the want to use air dry clay because it's very um, easily accessible and a lot of stores do carry it, but you do run into quite a few issues if you try and sculpt a full sculpture out of air dry clay. My best advice is use a baking clay like Super Sculpey or a two-part epoxy, and both of those do not shrink. Next question is, won't my pop melt in the oven? The answer to that is, it probably won't melt, but yes, it can melt. So what I mean by that is, the temperature you use to harden baking clay is a lot lower than the temperature needed to actually melt a pop. So if you follow the baking clay directions, you probably won't end up with a melted pop. But, like I said, you can definitely melt a pop in the oven. And I have an example for you guys. This is what a pop looks like when it melts in the oven. And the way this happened was, I usually stick my pops in the oven, um, bake them, and then turn off the heat in order just to let it kind of cool down and I don't have to pick up a really hot pop out of the oven. So I just leave it in there. I did that, turned the oven off, my mom didn't realize the pop was in there. She decided to preheat the oven to bake a potato at 400 degrees, and then I got this really melted pop. So can it happen? Yes, it can. Will it happen? Probably not. Make sure you keep an eye on your pop while it's in the oven. Make sure you keep your temperatures low, generally following the directions of the baking clay. Adjusting a little bit if it's too hot, you can always lower the temperature and raise the time you leave your pop in the oven. So guys, just remember, you can definitely melt a pop in the oven, um, but just always keep an eye on it. Don't get distracted like I did and make sure everybody knows that you have a pop in the oven. Next question is, is a sculpting question and it is, how do you get your clay so smooth? The best way to get clay smooth is to really work your clay, take your time, and try, I know this sounds silly, but try and get it nice and smooth. So you can't rush, you really have to spend a lot of time with your sculpt. Um, another great tip you can use, and probably the best tip, is use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a small brush and kind of smooth it over that way. You can even dip your fingertips in rubbing alcohol and um, that'll help you get your clay nice and smooth when you're down to the actual finishing details. But make sure when you're doing this, you do not um, kind of wash away all your details that you've sculpted in there. So use it sparingly to kind of get rid of mainly fingerprints and things like that. So use it sparingly, 
but it does help a lot. Also, make sure that you actually do spend a lot of time with your sculpt. Sculpting, you really have to finesse it and really um, work your sculpt. Make sure you have it where you want it before you put it in the oven. The next question is, how do I get my paint so smooth? And the best way to get nice smooth paint without any visible brush strokes is really to prime. You have to prime your pop. Uh, paint doesn't stick to the vinyl, so if you're just putting paint onto your vinyl, you're gonna end up with kind of lumps of paint um, and streaks everywhere. The reason being is because vinyl is very, very smooth and there's nothing for the paint to actually grip. So best advice when painting is definitely prime your pop. That's how we get a very nice smooth finish on our paintwork and I really, if, if, I, if I could not prime, I would not prime. It's a step, it's an extra step and it kind of takes away all the color of your pop and you kind of really have to start over. But I've really not found a better way to do this. You have to prime your pop. So um, prime your pops. We do it, it's an extra step, but you really have to prime your pop. Another thing you can do to kind of get rid of your brush strokes is make sure that your paint is liquidy. So what you can do is you don't want a very thick paint because then you're gonna have to really work on smoothing it out. So what you can do is you can add a little bit of water to your acrylic paint to kind of thin out your paint and make it a little bit easier to work with. Make sure that your paint is not too thick and you're not putting too much at one time. So what that means is you can always water down your acrylic paint, just a tiny, like a couple drops of water on into your acrylic paint and then kind of mix it up so it thins the paint out a little bit. Add one coat, let it dry, and you, you can still see through it. Go ahead, add a second, maybe even a third coat, but make sure each coat dries in between so you don't get any lumps of paint. The last and final question for this video that we're often asked is, what temperature do you bake your clay at? Now this question is kind of tricky because all ovens are different. At one point we had an old oven, we replaced it with a new oven and it kind of threw off our system of a baking a little bit because it was hotter. So um, we had to kind of readjust and relearn how long to leave our pop in. The best advice I can give you is follow the directions on the clay and if it's too hot, go ahead and lower down the temperature and raise the baking time. So what we do and what, what works for us is we bake at about 240 for 15 minutes. And what we do is we let the time run for 15 minutes, then turn off the oven leaving the pop in there till it completely cools and then we'll come back and take it out. Again, make sure you keep an eye on your pop. You can definitely use those temperatures, but just realize that all ovens are different and you do kind of have to play around with it and find the perfect temperature and time for you. All right guys, that is our top five questions that we're commonly asked about customizing Funko Pops or customs in general. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. For those of you who came for the top five questions, I hope these were helpful. If you guys have any questions of your own that you would like us to answer, please feel free to leave them down below and I will definitely make more of these videos if these videos are helpful to you guys. For those of you guys who are wondering where we've been and why we haven't been posting videos, like I said in the beginning of this video, we've moved. We've moved to Miami. We were kind of hoping for the move to go a little bit smoother and a little bit quicker, but um, unfortunately, that's how life goes. And sometimes it stops us from doing what we love, like making custom pops and sharing them with you guys. So hopefully from now on, we will be back on track and making videos. It's really cool. Now we kind of have a bigger art space. Um, we're still trying to set that up. We also have to set up our garage and get all our tools out of boxes. So hopefully pretty soon we'll start um, taking commissions again. Now, all this time we have not been doing, we have not been doing nothing, is that how you say that? All this time we've been keeping busy. So we haven't been able to do customs because customs take a lot, a lot, a lot of um, actual like supplies to make. So everything was in storage, but we have been doing art. And the main thing we've been doing is really um, canvas paintings. So I would love to share that with you guys. We've also, Hutch has been doing a whole bunch of sketch covers. And what else have we been doing? Flips. We've been doing flips. No, we have not been doing flips. Dude, that didn't help me at all. 
All right, I'm gonna show you guys some of the canvas paintings that we've been working on. I'm just gonna take this camera off this stand. Hutch is gonna run away. <laughs> All right, let me see what I can do here. Okay, so here's some of the stuff that we've done out of boxes so far. Um, all of those, not gonna lie, Hutch made all of those. I had nothing to do with any of these. There they are guys, all of these are not finished. That's why they're in that corner. Um, so hopefully pretty soon we'll get them done. Our goal for Miami is to do more art shows. So that is going to be our biggest thing. So we're gonna do more conventions, um, hopefully some art walks around here. So we're really gonna try and do that. So that's, that's our plan, we really haven't looked into it. So, but our goal is to do more art shows and do more cons. As far as custom pops in Miami, I'm not sure how big they are. Um, my first day out in Miami though, a couple weeks back or a while back now, um, my cousin took me to a Hot Topic and I actually got to meet one of you guys. Hi George, I hope you're watching. Um, we got to talk about pops and um, he recognized me, which was really cool. I don't get recognized. I don't, I don't know why. I don't. I don't expect to be recognized, so when it happens, it's really weird. Um, I'm like, how do you know me? So, but he recognized me and it was really awesome to be able to talk to somebody that watches my videos and that has questions that I can answer for them. So um, that was really cool and it kind of gave me a sigh of relief that Miami really does like custom buckle bops. So we're definitely gonna be doing more of those. Like I said, we're gonna do some um, paintings uh, sketch covers, let me show you those real quick because they're pretty cool and unique. All right guys, so this is what Hutch has been working on. He did this kind of his own version of the of Harley in her uh, original costume. He did a coon, but it's on a Rocket Raccoon sketch cover, so he crossed out Rocket Rack and left the coon part, which is super clever and adorable. And then he also did this one and we named it Icky Mouse uh, because it's weird and creepy and it's not Mickey Mouse. Uh, so this, the sketch covers that he has done, he's working on, I think, a Venom right now. These are actually on our Etsy shop. I also have a few more things to share with you guys that we've been working on and it is more creepy apples. I posted a video of these guys on our YouTube channel. We made a few more and they are super creepy and adorable. I have actually four of them. I don't think I can hold all four at the same time. Maybe I can. There they are guys, the new set of creepy custom apples. These are all custom made. They are made to look like real apples. They are a custom mold that Hutch and I worked on and they look exactly like real apples or we tried to get them to look as much as real apples as possible and then in the front they have a creepy cute face so um yeah i know some of you guys have been waiting for us to make more of these these will be listed on our etsy shop soon um the other thing that we've worked on and i'm super excited for this we actually took the uh, apple sculpt that we used for our creepy apples and did a poison apple from Snow White. So this thing is super amazing, super beautiful. Again, really, really, really sparkly. So this thing has, I think, well over 3,000 crystals. It is absolute, it's gorgeous. If you are a Snow White fan, um, I couldn't see you guys not loving this. This is so beautiful. Like I said, this is a, an original sculpted apple. And then I went ahead and sculpted all the uh, oozy stuff. And then we added a stem and the stem is glitter and it looks like a real apple stem because we used a real apple stem to actually make the mold. So um, these are some things that we've been working on and we're super excited to share these with you guys. We're actually gonna do another one of these where the apple is going to look like a real apple and then the ooze is gonna actually be in crystals. So that one's gonna be really cool. We're working on that one um, right now. And as soon as it's done, I'll make a video for you guys. Last thing I wanna share with you guys is two oil paints that Hutch and I um, have been working on. I kind of debated on whether to show you guys these. The reason I do wanna show you guys is because it kind of shows growth. 
So about maybe 10 years, 12 years back, I started a giant canvas painting um, and I kind of came up with a character and drew it on there and painted it and my mom loved it and she put it on her wall and the whole time I was like, this isn't great. This isn't what I want it to be. So whatever, I let her have it. When we moved into our new house, um, my mom and aunt, she, they were just super excited to display this clown and I thought if we're displaying these clowns, we are definitely redoing them. So the first thing I did when I got into our new house was I just took out all our paint and I started painting. And I had made it two of these. Um, one I never finished because I just didn't like them. So when Hutch saw me working on one of the clowns, he wanted to do the second one. I thought that was super cool. It'd be a cool collaboration. It'd be a really neat way for to see how different and yet the same we make them with our own individual styles. Now I'm gonna show you guys the before, the one I did 12 years ago. Please don't laugh. It wasn't great. I didn't have skills. So when we talk about art, uh, people always think that you can just be an artist and do whatever you want, and you can. But there are, there's a skill to art, and there is rules to art, which um, a lot of people don't really think about when they think art. They think it's just free and you do whatever you want. But there really is quite a few rules that um, will really help you kind of build the picture you want to build or um, the image you want to build. So um, in these 12 years, I've kind of grown quite a bit. I'm not saying I am where I want to be, but I'm definitely way, way further along than where I was 12 years ago. So again, <laughs> this is the image how I started 12 years ago. And then this is the image now. So yes, a lot of growth. I am super proud of myself. There are a few things in this one that I still would love to figure out and change, but knowing where I came from, um, it's come a long way. Uh, this is also the second one that Hutch is working on, and this is what they both look like together. So these are gonna be displayed at our home. Um, we're probably gonna make prints of these because I think they're really beautiful. And um, I really love them. So um, this is this is this is how far I've come. And the reason I wanted to share this with you guys is because I hear a lot of people tell me that they don't want to make a custom because it's not going to come out good. And think about that. If you never start, you will never get to where you want to be. So start a custom. Even if you think it's going to come out horrible, even if it does come out horrible, you're going to learn and you're gonna decide if you like it and if you're gonna decide if you wanna make more customs. Start something, have something to compare your future art to. So make a custom, whether somebody likes it or doesn't like it, whether anybody likes it, whether you like it or don't like it, that's not the point. The point is to start and try. And then if you love it and you wanna continue doing it, you will end up with um, a really awesome timeline of where you started and where you are or, or where you where you will be in the future so um i know i'm rambling about this but it's important to start try it if you don't like it you never do it again but at least you said you tried it and who knows you might love it you might actually be good at it and you might actually want to do more you can it's something that um you can give as gifts you can make for yourself you can you can sell it's art. So, all right, guys, there is my little, hopefully inspirational piece to this video. Um, you can come a long way if you stick with something. So just remember that. All right, guys, I know this video is way longer than it should be, but I really, it's been a while since I made a video. So I really wanna get all of this out um, to you guys. Miami's been awesome. We have a lot of awesome friends and family over here. Um, they've been really, really good showing us around kind of feeding us. We've eaten so much. Miami knows how to food. Um, there's like four boxes of pastries. It, five boxes of pastries in my refrigerator. But five, five, with like 25 pastries each. Like, ridiculous. Miami knows how to eat. My friends and family know how to feed us. We're kind of sad to leave Orlando, but super excited for the future. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do a lot of great things here and hopefully more videos to come. 
I promise you guys, just bear with me. Um, I'm going to try to get back to one video a week like I was before. Um, it might take me a little bit, but that is my goal and hopefully I will get there. We are going to get back to customizing. Um, just give us some time to be settled. Because once we start on a custom, of course, we want it to go smoothly and give you guys what you guys asked for. Thank you everyone for watching again till this long into the video. This is, if this was your first time watching one of our videos, definitely check out some more of our custom videos and some of our how-to videos. So maybe you guys will get inspired and try it too. For you guys who have been waiting for videos from us, thank you so much for waiting. You guys are amazing. Um, love talking to you guys whether it's online or in person, you guys are always awesome, super nice to us, so um, we're super grateful for you guys and for sticking around, even though we've been gone for a little bit, but hopefully we are back. If you guys enjoyed this video and wanna see more videos like this, please comment below and let us know um, what tips you'd like us to share with you guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and as always guys, subscribe to see more cool stuff from us in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching.